Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Fabanzi, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things that I was here. Let me we got a very serious show for you guys. Coming into this year, I want to start experiment. We want to start experimenting and talk about uh, talking about other things, uh, broader topics, not just sports, and just really expanding the audience. Uh, and we also believe that uh, some of the people that are already basketball followers, people that follow sports, also share a similar interest as well in topics like this so that's one of the reasons and number two just things that i think about things that i have opinions on and i said hey why not sh why not express my views on it so what happened as you guys know vlad dj vlad is one of the biggest channels on youtube huge platform been at it for about 10 15 years now uh has over 5.5 million subscribers i believe gets about 60 million views a month a pretty a very big juggernaut uh and uh in the media space also has his website very big uh, news outlet for hip hop and pop culture and all of that, right? We all know who Vlad is. And various people think various things about Vlad uh, and his TV. Some people don't like his interview style. Some people don't like the fact that he interrupts his guests and talks over them. But there are various people that think different things. Anyway, so what happened? Um, Vlad recently had on um, Matt Hoffa, who I'm sure some of you know, but he's pretty big too. I think he has about a million subscribers now uh, math off is a is a is a, is a, is a, a pr pretty big deal so they were talking about a range of things and what i like about math half on vlad is that math always pushes back on vlad he's not up there twerking it up for vlad and agreeing with him because some people just be happy to be in the room but math half would be pushing back <laughs> he'd be having like he'd be ready to go back at Vlad. so what happened recently um hollywood actress uh taraj p henson who we all know at least some of us know who's been acting for god knows how long um has a extremely expansive uh, uh um uh, catalog uh, and she's been she's been doing um a, a lot a lot of a lot of movies a lot, a lot of movies um one of the best actresses out there she recently came out and began to lament uh the fact that she was unhappy that women of color uh were not being paid what she believes they uh, they deserved she was on Sirius XM and she got pretty, pretty emotional about it. So what we want to do is want to play some of her comments uh, on that show. And then we're going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what she had to say here. And I heard on the street, Taraji, you had the audacity to say you're thinking about getting, stopping acting. We said, stop talking. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? Um, I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. Mm -hmm. The math ain't mathing. Mm -hmm. And when you start working a lot, you know, you have a team. Mm -hmm. Big bills come with what we do. Yes. We don't do this alone. The mm -hmm. fact that we're up, is a whole entire team behind That's us. Right. Yes. They have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million. No, that's not that. That didn't make it to their account. Mm -hmm. Know that off the top, Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have 5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting, off of what you grossed. Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. Mm -hmm. So. I just I'm You're tired. I'm a, I'm only human and and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling when it's time to renegotiate I'm at the bottom again mm -hmm. like I never mm -hmm. did what mm -hmm. I just did and I'm just tired, tired. Yeah. I'm tired. So you heard what uh, you heard what she had to say there she you know she expressed her views she didn't mince words um, she was pretty clear on what she felt about then uh, felt about the situation then uh, Vlad out of nowhere caught a whiff of these comments because he does talk news i went on his twitter he posts about news and all of that and vlad took it upon himself to then basically interject his opinions uh into the conversation and he basically disagreed with her right vehemently disagreed with her and during his sit down with math hoffa they were discussing this and they got into an argument and vlad was expressing the reasons why he didn't agree with what uh, she was saying. So for those of you who didn't hear that exchange, I'm gonna quickly play some of it uh, for you guys now, and then we're gonna come back and continue on with the show. Take a listen to what Vlad and Matt Hoffa had to say about this particular situation here. When it comes down to this, 
there is one entity that puts up the money and puts up all the risk. All the risk. When I interview somebody and they get an appearance fee, and this studio that you're in is very expensive, and the staff that's filming it are skilled, and I pay them accordingly. Right. And they have medical insurance that I pay for. Right. And paid holidays that I pay for. Right. And other benefits. Right. And, you know, all the equipment they need right. to do their job. Right. And the appearance fees that I pay the person who sits sits down. And listen, like, 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 like for example, like Dominique Wilkins, right? He came in, legendary basketball player. He got paid a nice appearance fee. The interview lost money. It's not. It's not Dominique's fault. He he did. He answered all the questions. But Dominique. But, ultimately, got, but Dominique got paid, right? Huh? He got paid. He got paid. Okay. Did he come back and say, "Yo, Vlad, I know you lost so, some money. So, Here's half my appearance feedback." Yeah, no. Nobody no, no, ever no, asked him no, for that. Nobody's doing I, that. Nobody's I doing took that. all the risk, right. and therefore, I pay people what I feel is fair, so the company can continue to function where we can make some profit. But it's hand in hand, Vlad. So well, all I'm if saying is, if Taraji I, if wants I come in to, here and a Pooh shiesty, and I just sit here staring at you. Right, Rich the Kid did pretty much that. But, in our but interview. It's, it's, right? Did you do you appreciate that? No. Okay, it's hand in hand, bro. We there's a partnership. There's a partnership. You, there's a partnership. You, you you have all this. There's a you partnership. The moment. There's, 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 there's but like, but I what give person you is some. taking all the financial risk? And the person who's taking the financial risk should, ultimately should ultimately make more. Should but make it more. It shouldn't be to the point where, come on, bro. But nobody, nobody's like, forcing the person to say, I'm going to accept this offer. They could say, listen, it's not enough money. Lots of times I've negotiated with people, it, hey, it's, it's not enough lie, money. It's the lie, Vlad. It's the lie. The lie? What it's lie? the lie that when you get into the industry, people tell you, yo, you get to this level and you get to this level and you're going to get to this level and you just, you, 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 that was a great movie. Watch one day you're going to get to this level. And then they... They reach a ceiling and they're like, wait a minute. You know what happens when you reach a ceiling? It's time for you to go around and, and go take the stairs to get to a higher floor. So find us, where the elevator is. I understand. And I've seen I've seen the comments. You don't People, got the answers, Vlad. <laughs> you don't got the answers. I do have the answers. You don't got the answers. At the point where you say, you don't listen, got the answers. by me being an actor or an actress, I'm not getting what I want. Do you Maybe think it's Kanye, time for do me you to be think, a producer do you think or me Yeezys, to be a director. Do you think Yeezys would be as big as they are if Kanye took Sway's advice and went independent? No. No. Why? Because these guys control up here. They control that shit. They're not going to let you get there unless they're making a profit, profit off. Yeezy, well, yay, he knew that. Sway didn't know that. Yay knew that. That's the whole reason why when they get to that, they told me I could get up there, but I'm not. I'm, I think I'm at the top of and, my game. And Kanye became but a I'm billionaire. Not there. Kanye became a billionaire through his partnership with Adidas. Yes. Right? Yes, he did. With Adidas. When he was, when he was with Nike, they were putting out these little limited edition Yeezys with him, and he was getting very little money because there wasn't any money to be had, right? When you make 10,000 sneakers, how much money? You're going to pay someone 100 but, 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 million? What he was, 10, what he was getting was that brand. Yeah. You got that? Okay. My name is synonymous now with, with these Nike. sneakers. With Nike. Now, now I could parlay now into it's a here. deal with Adidas. Now, he knew he had to do that. Right. And now he's putting out his own sneakers, so right? So when you sit there Those and be like, sock well, things. make your own movies. No, bro. So you heard the exchange between uh, the two of them, obviously. Uh, Math Hoffa was pushing back there. Then what happened? Um, they're sitting down and they're talking. Um, Vlad disagrees. And as you guys know, Vlad brings on a lot of repeat guests like Boozy uh, and, <laughs> and others. And then he brings on a regular uh, in TK Kirkland, who's always on the show, always has great interviews. And I just clicked on his video today by happenstance, right? I wasn't something I was looking to do. I clicked on it. And the title said, TK Kirkland on Cat Williams calling Kevin Hart an industry plant. Now, if you know anything about TK Kirkland, I believe he's in his, uh, um, I believe he's in his 60s, mid 60s or so, or 70s. It could be in his 60s, but he takes fantastic care of himself. Uh, and they were he was asking him to react to what Cat Williams had to say about Kevin Hart. And as he was talking, 
he began to break down to Vlad what is like to be a colored person and the experience of being a colored person uh, in Hollywood, right? Which was basically reinforcing the positions, <laughs> the uh, what is it? The positions that uh, Taraj B. Henson was expressing in the audio that we played for you uh, a few minutes ago. So what we want to do is want to quickly play what TK Kirkland had to say to Vlad TV as he basically fact checked him to his face. And then we're going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. Well, he went at a ton of people. Yes. Now, he went at Kevin Hart. Yes. Uh, and the two of them kind of had a, a thing now for a while. Right. Because right. I went back to some of my old footage and, you know, he yeah. talked about They've Kevin been going back at in it. 2013. Mm -hmm. He called him an industry plant. Right. He said that he already had movies lined up by the mm -hmm. time he moved to L.A. No one's ever seen him on the comedy circuit. And he was just planted like that. Now, I don't even really know what that means. That, that Here's the thing about stories. And that's why it's so interesting because we're talking about a world that doesn't know about Hollywood. So if you have someone that can talk convincingly and, I, are, and that's a great speaker, they have the ability to convince you what they want you to believe. Mm. There is no such thing as an industry plan. No. That ain't happening. Right. You have to actually put hard work into this business. Yeah. And you have to be very, very lucky, like hitting the lottery. Mm. Because um, there are a lot of great stand-up comedians. Not. But no one's never getting the opportunity. When I do panels of people who want to get into um, Hollywood, and they say, TK, how can I make it? I truly convince people to go the other direction. Me too. Because you don't you don't want to be in Hollywood, yeah. The, especially for African Americans. And let me tell the fans why. If you if I tell everybody around the world right now to do a research paper on black actors and black actresses in Hollywood, you will come back with a horrific story of disappointment and depression. It's just the way the world is. Mm -hmm. We we are basically swimming against the current in this business. So when one makes it. Instead of the other person congratulating them, we live in a world now because we have social media, we attack a person that's on top. So you heard what he had to say, right? Let me give you guys my thoughts on listening to Vlad say what he had to say. First of all, I'm going to be honest with you guys. It didn't sit well with me uh, listening to that Vlad talk. Um, it didn't, right? It didn't. It seemed as if he was a bit cavalier about how serious the situation was from the vantage point of uh, Taraj P. Henson and the vantage point of people that have been in similar circumstances that share her, um, that share her background, not just, uh, you know, you know, from where she's from and all of that, but also ethnically, ethnically. And he seemed to just summarily dismiss it as if she was saying something that was just like it, it, it was it was something that doesn't exist in reality and let me tell you why a lot of people would get annoyed with vlad and and i gotta i don't pay too much attention to vlad to be honest with you because talk sports but here's the issue that i'm having listening to vlad vlad is a i think he's a i think vlad is russian jewish i don't know exactly what his background is but he said he's that that's what he said because his name is vladimir and it's really annoying to hear somebody that comes from his background discuss these issues on such a big platform and talk like as if he has any clue of what the hell is really going on. How could Vlad have a clue? What movie role has Vlad ever tried to try out for or, 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 or go read a script for being a black man? Or a person of color. What was the movie? There was no movie. So how could you know what? How could you know what that experience is like? How? You don't know what that feels like. You've never been in that position. Now, what is interesting to me about Vlad is the following. Vlad <laughs> acts like he knows what it is to be black, but he's not. But he has figured out something quite. Uh, he's figured out something that he's used to his benefit, which is he has figured out a way to capitalize on the dysfunction within the black community and monetize it. Vlad is what, we, what you would call in high school an instigator. 
Vlad will sit down with you. He will ask you questions about person A, right? Talking to person B. He will then go sit down with person B and tell them, hey, this is what person A said about you. And then watch them go at it. And for him, what does it do? It, it makes for great content, which means that he makes money. He makes money off of the friction of other people. Here's what gets me about Vlad. Why doesn't Vlad bring up people from, you know, with a Russian background and all and Jewish background and all and sit up here and talk about their problems and talk about their dysfunctions? Why is your content predominantly about African-American music and African-American culture, but then have the chutzpah, a word I'm sure you would know, to then try to litigate people's feelings on various issues, talking about, no, this is real and that's not real and you can't feel this way and this is made up. What are you talking about? He then went on to talk about, well, just go create your movie studio. What movie studio or movie has Vlad ever made for him to talk like as if he knows what goes into making a movie? It is crazy to me. Vlad has never made a Hollywood picture, yet he's saying, well, just go out there and make a Hollywood movie because you can do it. Really, Vlad, can you really, really do it? You have no experience doing it. So how do you feel so confident talking about it? To me, it's absolutely unbelievable that he would take this position. And then he actually believes like he's saying something. Oh, well, she has a $6 million house. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? That has absolutely nothing. So she has a $6 million house. And so what? She worked hard to get it. And I'm sure she worked a lot harder than other people. I'm sure. So the fact of you saying she has a $6 million house, what does that have to do with anything? Did they give her that house? Let me talk some Nigerian pigeon to you. Did they dash her that house? Or did she not work for it? She worked for it, right? What she's saying is, I feel like I should be earning more based off of my tenure in the business and based off of what I see my peers earning. But Vlad is acting like as if he doesn't live in the universe. Vlad lives in Hollywood. And he acts like as if these things don't exist within the industry. Let me educate Vlad on something. Because he likes to research a lot of things. And I researched something for him. I am not sure, Vla I am not sure if uh, Vlad has heard of this person. It's an actress by the name of Hattie McDaniels. Okay, and I want to quickly read a little bit of information from Hattie McDaniels from BlackHistory.com. It says... When Hattie McDaniels won an Oscar, she was banned from sitting with her co-stars. Hattie McDaniel became the first black Oscar winner in 1940 for her portrayal of a slave named Mammy in the 1939 film Gone with the Wind. Sadly, though, when she attended the Academy Awards ceremony on Coconut Grove nightclub in the Ambassador's Hotel, she wasn't even allowed to sit with her co-stars. McDaniels arrived at the show with an escort and her agent, William, who was white. She was even dressed as a rhinestone studded out in a rhinestone studded out gown with white gardens in her hair. But this still didn't qualify her to sit at the t at the gone of the wind table. Instead, she was escorted to a small table in the back room that was being used to store the Oscar tro uh, uh, award trophies. Apparently, the hotel, like most establishments at that time, had a strict no blacks policy. And a special exception had to be made for her to even attend the ceremony at all. Vlad, if you know this information, why would you then go out there and open up your ass and then make it seem as if these things that Taraj B. Henson is talking about and echoing do not exist within that industry? You lose me. You lose me. It's extremely offensive, lad. I'll speak for myself and others to listen to you talk on these things. You don't put out any positive content on blacks at all. At all. It is all negativity. All of it. It's not educational. It's all negativity. And to have the goal to sit up there and talk, well, just go out there and do it. What movie have you done? What movie have you done that you can sit up there and say what it's like? You're listening to Matt Hoffa in that interview. He's talking about the system. Vlad is acting like he doesn't know this. 
It's like somebody saying, hey, Vlad, I'm a black complainer. I'm only getting a $2 CPM on YouTube, and I'm doing all this and I'm doing all this work. I don't know what to do. And then somebody comes up, well, get off of YouTube then. Go start your own YouTube. You sound ignorant. I'm sick of Vlad talking about these topics because you're not qualified. I'm sorry you're not. And it's not as simple as you're making it out to be. It's not. It's not. For somebody that makes as much money off of black dysfunction as you, you would think in a particular moment like this, you would shut the hell up. You would go sit down and shut the hell up. Because I assume you would be offended if some black brother like me or whoever stood up and started talking about things going on that, 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 that your people are being Of course you would feel a type of way. So I feel a type of way. I feel a type of way. And anybody watching the show talking about your race, man, you can kiss my ass. I'm telling you like it is. Get your head out of the sand. We live on earth. We live on earth. I'm not here to uh, cry about it. And you don't hear me crying about it, but I know what's going on. Trust and believe. I know what's going on. It's just that I don't bitch about it. Because I'm a big boy and I can handle it. But I don't bitch about it. But we know what the hell is going on. To act like prejudice and these things don't exist. Do you live on planet earth? Do you see what's happening around the world? Where you live at? So for Henry putting out those comments, I think is extremely ignorant. And I don't think he's qualified to talk about it. I just gave you an example uh, Example uh, here by going through this history, uh, going through this, going through this, uh, this article on Hattie McDaniel, who's a Hollywood actress. And you sitting up there talking, well, dude, go make a movie. You go do it yourself. What time have you ever raised resources? And what the hell does it have to do about the fact, oh, the film is going to lose? That's business. If my rate is my rate, you're going to pay me. Whether or not your movie does well or not, what's that's my business? But you're going to pay me. If I'm supposed to be getting $20 million a picture and it doesn't do well, what the hell I got to do with me? I went out there and I performed my role. She's being paid to perform the role. So why are you talking about they took a loss? That's not her business. It's up to the next person to say, oh, wait a minute, this person's not successful at making movies. But that's not what she's discussing, is she? And that's not what you're discussing. You went up and said, oh, well, she has a twenty or six million dollar house, and I live in and he's talking about I live in California. Who cares? You're interjecting yourself. I live in if you work hard and, and if you do this and you do that, and then you do that. Vlad, sorry to break it to you. When we're talking about people that we want to aspire to be, ain't nobody looking at you. I'm sorry. At personally, I'm looking at people like Tony Alimalu. Ain't nobody looking at you. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sick of it listening to this dude say this. You got you got some nerve. You got some nerve. With the amount of negative, you know what, that you put out on blacks, you got the nerve to sit up there and be talking about it? You got some nerve. You don't even know you're insulting your audience. And you love it. And some of you dudes tune in and watch it. Him sit around instigating people. I don't get it. If Boozy going to boycott Gucci, boycott Vlad because he's doing the same thing. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We'll catch you on the next show. Peace.